Okay, first the XHP 35 high intensity version. Now the XHP 70.2. <laughs> It just never gets old. It never gets old. Welcome back. We're gonna take a look at upgrading the BLF GT to that massive wall of light you just saw. If you're into that, what we'll do is swap out the XHP 35 high emitter for an XHP 70.2. I'll show you how to boost the driver current on the existing board, and I'm also going to show you a prototype MOSFET driver that Texas Ace made for the light. As far as I know, there's not any epoxy holding the bezel of the head together, but I still had to enlist some help to get mine free. Okay, this is something I get asked about a lot, so we're going to go over it real quick. Uh, people say, well, do you have 12-volt uh, XHPs, or do you have 6-volt? And the thing is, it's, there's no difference. The, all XHP emitters are the same thing. They can either be wired as 6-volt or wired as 12-volt. And the difference is the MCPCB, the way that the traces are run. Okay, looking here first at our LED... On the bottom you can see that there's four pads out at the edges and those are your electrical paths. Um, on this, this is a 6 volt MCPCB and you can see at the edges here, these are connected. So your power will come in here, connect to both sides of those pads, run across the emitter, and then both come out. So in, in this LED, there's actually two dies, and they both get powered from here, and the power runs across them, and then out here. That's a two series, two parallel on those dies. On this, this is a 12 volt MCPCB, and you can see there's that little split between them. What happens then is power will come in here, run across one of the die sets, and then the traces under here that you can't see come around and they bring it back in here and then it goes in here and across and then out. So basically you have all four dies wired in series there so that's how you get a 12 volt setup versus a 6 volt. This MCPCB is a prototype made by Lumen Top that I got from Texas Ace. He's trying to compel them to manufacture these for us. So if you're interested in this ultra-large XHP70 copper board, uh, please let us know down in the comments. I think if we can show them our interest level in it, we might have a good shot at getting some made. Now that we've got that settled, we can boost the current on our driver board, and we will need only one aftermarket part for that, a resistor. It needs to be a 25-12 footprint, 50 milliohm, 1% tolerance, and it needs to be at least a 3 watt. Bonus tip, you can use a pair of needle nose pliers to open that driver ring, but something I've found that works much better is this. It's a large pair of snap ring pliers I got cheap on eBay that I just ground the tips down to the size that I need, and it fits in those rings and in bezels and tail caps and everything perfectly, and it doesn't slip. We'll be replacing this big one right here in the middle that says 91 milliohm. ohm 
You can remove these resistors by unsoldering one end at a time and kind of lifting up the end, but once in a while you break pads doing that, so if you have a choice, I like to use two soldering irons. It just lifts right off. Okay, moment of truth. Ooh, <laughs> almost moment of something else. Yeah. You will need an LED isolator with a larger hole in it, so you can either drill out the one you got, or I used one that Texas Ace 3D printed as luck would have it. Yeah, the focal length is basically the same for this and we get a really good hot spot. There's a little bit of a corona and around the, the very outer edge of that corona there is kind of a ring but I can live with that. That's pretty good. There's no dark cross in the center. On the right we have our XHP 35 high and on the left the XHP 70.2. First up our neutral white XHP 35 high intensity. Now our upgraded XHP 70.2. The next thing I want to try is de-doming the LED. After the first pass with that, it was still just slightly uh, rougher on the top than what I wanted, so I took a second pass with just the razor and smoothed it out. Texas Ace created a MOSFET driver for this and so it'll be essentially direct drive so we'll get a lot higher current using this so I'm going to try that out now. It came with this spring on it but I'm going to replace that with a brass button. Just ignore the color of those switch wires. <laughs> here's here's what happens if you get it wrong <laughs> your light just does its its own stuff watch my finger's not on the switch it's just ramping up on it so i get okay we'll try it again okay on the third try i got it right uh, somebody write this down so I can remember it. Black goes to SWLED. Red goes to ground. I can't see what's written there. And white goes to V positive. Okay, if you remember our tower. Big water tower. Water tower. 
3,442 feet. Looking first at our XHP 35 high intensity version. No problem reaching that tower. Now our 9,000 lumen XHP 70.2. Okay, I get a lot of questions about this too. So I went ahead and ran the numbers on all of these lights. I had uh, three of the neutral whites from the latest batch, plus I have the original cool white prototype, and I also did tests for all the other mods that I did. Full disclosure, you may want to take all of my numbers with a grain of salt, because uh, when I test, I test with the meter up against a wall like I showed in my other video, and that means that some of the bounce back from that wall could be affecting the sensor. I think I'm getting consistent readings, but just be aware of that. You know, if you're testing with your light meter on a tripod or you have walls coated in vent black, you might be getting a different number than what I am. <laughs> Using the reflector from my Comboy L6, I was able to test each of our variations for lumen output also. Looking on the far right, you can see our CD rating, or LUX, calculated back to one meter. All four of our samples, we got over a million, which was quite impressive to me. Uh, the cool white testing only slightly higher than our three neutrals. Looking just to the left, you can see on our lumen scale, when we de-domed the LED, we did lose just a slight bit of output, a few hundred lumens, but we got almost double the amount of lux or range out of it. And finally, looking at our fully jacked mod with its 8,778 lumens reaching over 1.3 million CD. Now, the, dis the difference that you see when you're looking at that on the video or with your own eyes or whatever, um, why the cool white looks so much more intense is not because one of them is 1.1 million and the other is 1.2 million. That's uh, that's not that's not it. Okay. Um, the from what I understand, the cool white, the blues and purples, they get trapped in the atmosphere more easily than what the oranges and yellows and browns those do. So really, at a mile away when you're using the neutral white at a similar intensity, you're getting more light down there to that target because that laser-like effect that you see is actually light being trapped in the atmosphere. Uh, as far as which is better, uh, I kind of like the cool white myself. I know that you know, that means it's not performing as well at a mile away, but for me, there's something to be said about the wow factor, and I really like that, and I'm not complaining, you know, whatever. I understand why they went with neutral, but that's why you see the difference there. As far as why they perform slightly differently on the numbers, that's a little tougher. Um, some of the obvious things are... Um, with that one test subject of the cool white, it could be that we got an anomalous emitter, like we got one that was, we struck the bin lottery basically and got one that was at the top of the range. Um, uh, another possible uh, thing is the neutral whites could all be one bin lower. Um, I kind of think probably not, but that is a possibility. Um, I know that sounds more likely than what I said the first time, but if you've tested as many emitters as I have, you know that getting a one that's on the top of the range is, you know, not that uncommon. There really is that gap there. Um, the only other thing I can think why they might test a little lower is maybe the light meter um, registers warmer colors less effectively than cool. I don't have any data to back that up yet, but it, you know, it could be. I don't know. For more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Good lucks.